Hello everybody, Sanyo, Engineer, MBA and Ambassador and today's video I want to talk about Beam Therapeutics, I want to talk about base editing, I want to talk about why base editing should be in your radar in the upcoming months and years and before we do that, before we jump into today's video, a couple of comments, like this video, smash that like button, destroy that like button. If you haven't subscribed yet, please consider subscribing. Lots of great things are coming up. Just applied for the ad revenue for YouTube. Like I mentioned to you guys before, all that money from the ad revenue will be reinvested in genomics and CRISPR companies. So keep that in the lookout. Thank you so much for support, guys. All my subscribers from day one, I know some of you personally, so thank you so much for the support. It's been a long, long, wild journey, so let's keep the momentum going. We just haven't even scratched the surface yet of what we can do with this channel. And the mission of this channel has always been to provide information for free for you, for your friends, for your family, for your colleagues. Again, we don't provide any paid course. We do not have anything to sell, no merch, no paid courses. We don't ask you guys for money, nothing. All we ask you guys for likes, subscribes, and obviously for sharing and commenting on our videos. So thank you so much for watching guys and let's keep it up the momentum. So I wanna talk in today's video about base editing. And the reason why I wanna talk about it is a couple of things. First of all, I do wanna clear the elephant in the room. Base editing is part of CRISPR, okay? It is not the only tool that will be valued in the upcoming years, in my opinion and in other people's opinion. Not financial advice, this is just our experience. I know a lot of people refer to CRISPR Cas9 cuts from companies like CRISPR Therapeutics or NTLA as the first generation of CRISPR. Now, I do wanna remind you guys that there is no FDA approved commercial drug right now, which means that there is no commercial CRISPR drug, which means that they can't really sell it beside making obviously money from revenue and from licensing deals or from partnership, just like what CRISPR Therapeutics was able to do with Vertex, for example. But the point of me bringing this up is to remind you guys that there is no commercial available drug right now. It's not like first gen of CRISPR has been selling like hot cakes out there and then boom, we have this base set and it came out and then it's here to disrupt that. Everything is still not available in the commercial. Now, you could make two arguments to that, right? The first side is what I personally argue against, uh, for, sorry, is the idea that because there's no commercial drug right now, because there's no commercial drug right now in, in the CRISPR, it doesn't really matter which generation of CRISPR is better than the other. If CRISPR therapeutics can get their first FDA approved drug, then in my opinion, all these companies, including companies like Team Therapeutics, including like Prem Medicine as a third gen CRISPR company, all of them will benefit, right? All of them. This is a win-win scenario for everybody. This is not a, uh, a zero sum game, right? But then there's the other side that argues that because it's not FDA approved, the FDA regulators are going to look at it and basically always favor the more uh, superior technology. However, my arg counter argument to that is in the past, it's not the superior technology that actually had its, uh, its product FDA approved. Just keep that in mind, right? You can do the research, just look at what happened with the pandemic. You don't have to have the FDA, uh, the superior technology to have an edge, uh, an edge over other products in your vertical, whatever that is, right? That's just my thoughts. That's just, I just want to clear that up. It is an elephant in the room. I strongly believe in the first generation of CRISPR and the second generation of CRISPR and in the third generation of CRISPR. Now, what, would, what uh, resonates with Beam Therapeutics as it stands is they're actually involved with the second generation of CRISPR and third generation of CRISPR. They obviously have full control or basically are known for base editing, uh, which is a second generation of CRISPR, but they also owned 5 million shares of the third generation of CRISPR, which is prime medicine, prime editors. They own 5 million shares of that company. They also share leadership between each company. So obviously, obviously they have vested interests in the third generation of CRISPR. And I will look at a Twitter thread there shortly, but 
I do want to remind you guys, you know, this was an article from Ali Yurman from ARK Invest, and we did cover this article briefly in previous videos. It was like a few weeks ago. But really, the main advantage of base adding in prime editing over targeted nuclei, such as CRISPR-Cas9, tra transcription activators like effector nuclei or zinc finger nuclei, is that they do not simply mediate it target gene disruption, but instead allow gene correction and even in most therapeutically relevant cell types, which do not support homologous directed repair HDR. Therefore, these technologies can correct the cause of disease by correcting mutated DNA letters that the causes thousands of genetic disease, which cannot be done in cell types by simply cutting DNA with a nuclease. So if you remember, we covered this in previous video. We talked about the different, um, the different letters, right? T, A, C, G. And base adding, what it does is with a certain pattern, it can change that letter to another letter. And again, this is this is what I often tell you guys is that it's not just gonna need we won't just need CRISPR companies to flourish in this space. We will need diagnostic companies, mapping companies. We need to be proactive and understand the space, right? It's not like beam therapeutics can just throw out base editing and just decide to correct a, a letter in a gene genome just by you know sheer luck or sheer run doesn't work like that you need data you need big data you need artificial intelligence and that's why companies like invite companies like bngo companies like pacific biosciences illumina all these companies are all going to flourish you will need this space to grow all together this is what i often tell you guys that we have many many winners biotech as a space is so big but again going back to today's video here uh, the idea of base editing and prime editors uh, make only one strand of DNA, but do not make double-stranded DNA breaks, which obviously you would never want to prefer, right? Double-stranded DNA breaks can cause a lot more risk and a lot more issues than obviously what base and prime editors do. But however, however, like I mentioned previously, there is no CRISPR available drug. And if one gets the job done, you want to get that out in the market ASAP if it proves efficiency and safety. This is another topic for another day, but you know, for all the blockers for all the delays we're putting on CRISPR-Cas9 cuts, for example, from CTA001, there are many, many patients dying every single day right now. Obviously, this is a hyperbole. I, I don't want to go in that rabbit hole, but my point is that this is not uh, a situation where we can wait another 10, 15 years until one technology comes out with the most papers and so on. And talking about papers, talking about papers, um, this, this article here clearly mentioned how um, how base editing had the most academic papers compared to prime editors. But again, prime editors with prime uh, medicine, for example, technology, all these publications are, are increasing at years ago by. And the idea behind this paper, this article here, was that prime medicine and prime editors will have the same trajectory, hopefully, as beam editors and uh, beam uh, base editing and beam therapeutics. Now, the point I'm trying to make here is that you can see prime editing coming out, but that doesn't put base editing out of stock, right? And it doesn't put the first generation of CRISPR-Cas9 cuts out of stock either, right? All of these technologies will emerge as we are FDA approved, hopefully by 2023, as we've speculated in this channel, not financial advice again. So just wanted to go over this uh, difference really briefly and sort of give my thoughts here as to why it's important to recognize that all these companies will win, but Beam Therapeutics is obviously the winner and the leader with base editing. I know NTLA adopted a base editing program, but again, it's not their bread and butter. The bread and butter for Beam Therapeutics is base editing. They've licensed the technology to Brave Therapeutics. They have their partnership with Prime Medicine. Obviously, obviously, they have their own pipeline, which they filed for IND, which I'm so happy and covered in the past. So great things are coming for this company. And I definitely want to uh, want to let you guys know that, right? So I did this this track from Alexander here. I did promise to cover their thread at some point, And it's a beautiful thread. Let's take a look at it. This is a high-level thread on why I believe Beam Therapeutics has the most fascinating business model in biotech. The traditional biotech model looks something like this. Company establishes pipeline, drug development commences, drugs are commercialized, rinse and repeat. BIM Therapeutics is the best example of a platform company that not only follows the traditional model, but has a completely separated revenue stream from underlying technology. Base editing is the foundation from 
for the drug development. Base editing is the foundation for the strategic partnerships, one umbrella tech technology, two different application, in-house development versus license deals. I love that from Beam Therapeutics. It's one of the reasons why I decided to invest in this company. Uh, one of the many reasons, but you know, being a platform is something else, right? This is the software model. You know, this is what Apple was able to do that Windows and Microsoft will fail to do in the early years, right? This is what Apple has capitalized on in the software world, and this is what many companies are trying to capitalize on in different industries. And biotech is no different, right? We're seeing what Moderna is doing, and obviously we're seeing what Beam Therapeutics is doing in CRISPR, the space. So. Before I dive into the mutual benefit of licensing, it's important to understand Beam position in the market. Beam's allure stems from the fact that base editing came from Leo's lab and is protected by portfolio patents. Even with that being the case, a handful of company announced the development of novel base editors. These announcements cause unease among shareholders to an extent. However, if we operate under the assumption that not all base editors are equal and the fact that Beam spends significant R&D to optimize their editors, we can conclude that the editor optimization is their mode and continuous to optimization is the key to maintaining. To reiterate, the number of companies with novel base editor does not matter. The quality of the editors matter. The quality of editors matter. Really, really underrated sentence there, right? I believe Pam Beam Therapy Patents are written in such a way that makes it hard to optimize editors without infringing it. The most optimized base editing toolkit is a powerful mode. As long as the mode remains, Beam will be the premier partner for any company looking to license base editing. Again, we were all expecting Moderna to partner with Beam Therapeutics. Obviously, there were some talks with Kaibu Biosciences, but uh, Moderna did something that no one expected and decided to partner with uh, a, a no name or company that I will not cover in this video, which I've already covered and given my thoughts. Another topic, maybe for another day. So now that I've covered, let's jump into the mutual benefit of by base, a beneficial licensing ecosystem that Beam has created. The receiving company is granted access to best in class editors, increasing the likelihood of successful drug development. Beam is granted immediate cash and future revenue depending on commercialization. So obviously, you know, they get, you know, cash on hand. And then obviously in the future, they get some sort of royalty depending on sales and so on. Uh, and it is obviously a complex business deal that is made and always in the public eyes is seen. So shareholders will know about it, hopefully. So just like what would happen with Rift Therapeutics. The model is intriguing because there's so many monogenic diseases for Beam to address, again, huge, total addressable market. Biotech time is worth its weight in gold. Beam selected a handful of indications to dedicate their internal time and resources to. Licenses allow them to reap the benefits of tackling a medley other monogenic diseases without dedicating their own resource development. What hasn't been mentioned is licensing other aspects in the toolkit. Beam is currently licensed out their editing technology is putting significant resources behind solving the delivery bottleneck. But what if like, Beam Therapeutics license out the editing technology and delivery vehicle? Delivery vehicle, very important keyword here. Solving for effective delivery is an issue that only grows larger as space matures. Great editors without delivery accomplish little. I totally agree with that. Dr. Liu from uh, Professor Dr. Liu mentioned that with ARK Invest, with Ali and Brett in their interview uh, back in September, which we've covered in this channel again. The acquisition of Guide signifies, 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 signifies the, that they believe that they can solve for LNP delivery outside the liver, therefore licensing out optimized Base editors paired with optimized LNPs is the perfect storm. For example, Beam is likely collecting a plethora of the data on various base editors and LNP pairing. Depending on the use case, companies could save a significant cost via licensing from Beam as opposed to solving for editing and delivery themselves through their own R&D. Very, very great tweet here. I love how, you know, Alexander here is going. And looking, it is high level, but it's not really that high level, right? We're actually talking about their business model. This is not just uh, a one sentence part. This is why I love looking at these types of threads because you can 
look, although there are tweets and limited in characters per tweet, you can sort of develop your thesis through several tweets that follows like a storyline. You know, I, I know it sounds very basic and very uh, one plus one, but it's actually revolutionary the way it can be communicated. You know, in the past where you would have paragraphs written, be very hard to understand, very hard to express, very hard to read. And then you have these tweets coming out like in a, in a Twitter thread. It's just amazing, right? Um, this this would streamline de drug development for companies that choose licensing, allowing them to focus on their expertise on other nuances while delivery and editing are taken care of. I'm aware that this, take, this thread makes a lot of assumptions, including base editors not being created equal, equal being having the best in-class editors, the ability to solve LMP, delivery outside the liver, and the ability to package optimized base editors for LMPs together for licensing purposes. However, that doesn't take away the fact B is creating something absolutely fascinating. The license remind me of SaaS products, software as a service, the drug development model reminds me of traditional biotech. These two models blended together is something totally unique. All in all, this blended model key is a key differentiator for Beam and contributes to my overall thesis as to why they will be exceptionally successful in this de decade. So beautiful thread here from Alexander. I literally read it word by word, at least to the best capabilities I can, can do. Uh, again, I know some people comment on when I read stuff. Uh, it's very hard to read and speak out loud and make a video just as a reminder. You know, I, I urge you guys to try that. Uh, and especially when English is not necessarily your first language. Uh, at this point, I don't even know which language is my first language. Apparently, French is not my first language. So English is not my first, first language. So I don't know. It's like a, a Duolingo at this point. I don't, I'm not even sure. But uh, beautiful thread here from Alexander. Highly recommend you guys to follow him. Um, the importance here is that Beam Therapeutics has sort of changed the game for CRISPR companies. At least that's what is being claimed here. And I think a lot of industries and verticals, not just in biotech, right? Not just in biotech or CRISPR space, a lot of companies are taking the Apple iOS model. And Apple didn't even start it, right? Actually, Apple did not start it, right? Windows didn't even start it, right? The idea of being a platform, even if you go back outside the internet, right? A mall, is the concept of a platform, right? A mall, a retail mall, right? You you have like a retail mall, you have a bunch of shops. That's the concept of a, a platform. Now, obviously it's a different ballgame in software and way different ballgame in biotech, but beautiful trade here, quite, quite uh, bullish here on Beam Therapeutics. I've already said it in the past. The only thing I was never a fan of is the fact that they, they took so long to file for IND and obviously they've, They've gone past that hurdle, and I'm a man of my word. I will not, um, I will not hold the grudge, or I will not um, beat a dead horse. They've done it, so now we can move to the next chapter for their uh, company. Obviously, I want to see more deals. I want to see more partnerships. I would love, I would have loved to see that more than a deal. I think people, I, I think Beam Therapeutics would have just, you know, solidified their thesis to an extent where um, it just wouldn't be arguable at this point, but there's still some knee series about the company. There's still some knee series about base editing. I know that I've seen some comments from several individuals. I won't talk about it in this channel and uh, this video anyways, but I will leave it off like this in today's video. Again, I, my goal here was to talk about base editing, a little bit about prime editors. I wanted to clarify my position that other first gen companies are not in risk of maybe in 20, 30 years, but this is far out guys. Let's, Focus on the next year, two years, three years. Let's think about as an investor, You, I want to help you guys. I want to provide you guys information for free, but I also don't want to mislead you guys and start making decisions today that in 30, 40 years may happen. No one can predict the future, right? So just keep that in mind. And again, keep your research here. It's a beautiful Sunday. This is what the best time to research, right? The best time to research is not on Monday or Tuesday when things are hectic and busy and markets are going crazy. Things are, you know... When things are calm, the, the calm before the storm, that's the best time to research and to pull the trigger for your investments. Again, never financial advice. We will leave this video like this. Thank you so much for watching. Like this video if you found value. I will end this video like this. I will say that uh, it's been an amazing 
uh, journey so far. So thank you so much for the support. And we will see each other during the week. Have a beautiful weekend. End of weekend. Beautiful Sunday and a beautiful week. Thank you so much for watching.